Well, congratulations on the win. I mean, what a grind. I mean, twice already now with Texas Tech. Uh, I guess every, let's start with how are you feeling? Are you okay? <laughs> I'm banged up, but it's a part of the game. And anything to do to get the dub, I'm willing to do. And that's getting on the floor, getting up in the air, blocking shots, everything. What happened on that play? Does it, was it just kind of like an awkward landing on your leg or what, yeah, what happened there? I, I had came down and then I guess his momentum had came and it took me down on the floor and he had fell on my ankle. Okay. I mean, you got back in the game, moved around, you looked like you were doing okay. I had to, I had to, I had to finish the game up. All right. And Caleb, you're becoming as clutch as it comes, especially on the glass. I mean, today you were all over the glass, especially in overtime. Um, you know, when it comes to rebounding, that's a toughness stat right there. Yeah. Um, you know, what does it say about you that you're making these plays late in the game? Um, honestly, it's just me playing hard. These last few games, my success, like on the glass and everything, it's just me playing hard and knowing, like, knowing, and putting myself in a position to rebound. I trust my teammates are going to make the right plays and everything. I always believe they're going to make the shot. But then again, I always have to put myself in a position just in case. So, you know, it's just, it's just playing hard. All right, members of the media, if you have questions for Oklahoma State's Caleb Boone or Avery Anderson, please click raise hand. We'll try and get to everybody. We just ask that you please address the question to the person who you want to answer it. Our first question is going to come from Jacob Unruh from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Jacob. Yeah, Avery, um, I kind of want to start with the start of that second half. You guys went about almost seven minutes without a field goal, um, and you guys flipped the switch there. Was that what, – what did it take to kind of flip the switch there? You don't have Kate on the floor. Um, things look so bleak. I mean, you're getting basket interferences. You're getting air balls. What did you guys kind of do? What was the message there? I was just a bit of course and just keep playing defense, stick to what we do, and that's keep getting stops and shots were going to fall, and that's what happened. We just kept getting stops on the defensive end and shots were falling. Was that kind of uh, one of the bigger gut check moments for you guys this season? Of course, of course. Coming out, because in the beginning of the season, in the second half, we just completely lost ourselves. Coming, coming like from a good first half, and then coming out of the halftime, we just would totally lose ourselves, and we had to keep working on that and practice. And as you see, it got better throughout the course of the season, and we just kept grinding, and we coming out with wins. And and I got to ask you too, you, you defended Mac McClung most of the night, and we talked a lot about him the other day with you. Um, what was the key tonight against him? You face guarded him a lot. You did all kinds of things. What was what was that battle like, I guess? Um, just to make everything tough for him. He's a good scorer. He's a good pass. He could do it all. And I just wanted to make things tough for him, not easy. And Caleb, uh, I, I want to start with your brother, Keelan. He hasn't played much lately. He hasn't hit a shot since January. How big was it to see him come out and hit shots tonight and do what he did? Bro, it was, it was, as, a, as a big brother, man, it was, it was an incredible feeling because obviously everybody knows we're roommates and a lot of people don't know what we talked about outside of like outside of the court and everything. But you know, Keelan's been dealing with you know not playing. It, it's hit him at times, but seeing him go out there, and we, I told him, I said, I said, can you just be ready, bro? I know it's like I have a feeling, bro. This gonna be one of the games, bro. Where he thought calls your name and he's gonna need you. And he said, bro, I got you. He had unbelievable like a week of practice. He he made he he really helped us prepare for Mac McClung. Um, Holly Edwards, um, McClure, all of them really, because he just he in practice he played like them. But as a big brother, man, I was just I was just so happy to see him and like just the energy and the spark that he brought. It reminded me of last year's Keelan when like when he came off that bench, he hit the three, and then he's gonna go get like two, three offensive rebounds and go get a big defensive plays. And I, I was just proud to see my brother go out there and play because I miss seeing him on the court. And you guys have been pretty good in overtime this year. What is it about overtime with you guys? I mean, it's just that in overtime, man, we just think about all those extra times we put in the gym. I mean, my guy wakes up every day, like every morning to go and do a 6 a.m. workout, 7 a.m. workout. Uh, and May shoots 100 free throws. It's not to brag, but that's just like in overtime, that shows what we, that's the extra work. That's the coming in late hours that are early, early mornings and stuff like that. The extra shots after practice. That competitive stamina that we have, that Coach B talks about, where you got to fight through it all. That's that's the work on 20 and 2s, too. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, fellas. Yes, sir.
Our next question comes from Marshall Scott from Pistols Firing. Go ahead, Marshall. Yeah, Avery, whenever you guys did get scoring in the second half, you went on, I believe, an 8-0 run by yourself. Kind of what were you feeling in that? Was that Mike telling you, you know, to attack the basket, or was that just kind of you going in the flow of the game? Me just going in the flow of the game, I saw everybody, like, wasn't getting going, and I just wanted to pick it up for us. And me, I'm the type of dude, if we need defensive stops, I'm going to try to do that. If we need scoring, I'm going to try to do that. If we need somebody to make plays, if somebody deny K or ice, I'm going to do that. So... For me, I just saw we needed some scoring. And so I just decided to attack and try to get it at the rim. Tech called a timeout somewhere in your little scoring spree, and Mike nearly jumped on top of you with excitement and stuff like that. What, is, what does that do for you guys whenever you see Mike getting that excited? <laughs> it, just, it just brings joy to the team. Like, we'll talk about it after in the locker room. Like, it, it, just, it just brings energy, too, because we see the coach getting hype and it gets us hype and we want to go out there and even do even way better and bring energy throughout the game. And then Caleb, you were standing behind Mike whenever he's doing his OSU chant at the end of the game. Kind of what 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 do you see? What what goes through your mind whenever you see him doing that kind of stuff? I mean that that's the that's the reason why honestly that's why I came here, man. Just that kind of energy that he brings to the team. Yeah, he loves he loves the water. He loves his community. We, we, we can't thank the fans enough, man. The fans really help us, like helps us push through those overtimes, through the whole game and everything. And I love that he shows the appreciation because honestly, they they are what helped us push through that those that um five, that extra five minutes of the game. And then this can be for either one of you. You guys, OSU hasn't made a tournament in a long time. Is that something as a players you guys talk about? Um, you know, you're, you're in pretty good position now to make the tournament. Is that something you guys talk about? Uh. <laughs> honestly, honestly, with with everything going on during this off um, this off season, with like the ban and everything, and all that, we we honestly we're just out here playing with no regrets. We're playing for us, and if we're blessed to see a tournament, we we would know like okay, that it, it's not it's like it's not a fluke. But like if we don't, it, it is what it is. We're we're really playing just to say we didn't leave, we didn't hold back the, this year. Like we, we left everything on the court and with this team. Appreciate it, guys. Our next question comes from Robert Allen from Triple Play Sports. Go ahead, Robert. Yeah, Jacob. Jacob did a pretty good job of asking a lot of the questions I was I was going to ask. But Avery, when you think back on this game later tonight, when you get back to your room or when you're chilling, uh, will you think first more than likely of that defensive play, or will you think of that run you had offensively in the second half? Or does it matter to you? Me, I mean, I'm a, I'm gonna think of the defensive play because I, I like blocks and that that gives me power. Up. So I'm gonna think of the defensive play, but also thinking of the offensive plays that got my team going and helped my team throughout the game. Was so I, a, I think of both. Was that a double block though? Because did Keelan block it too? I think I blocked. <laughs> yeah, you, when Avery had the first one, and the first one was good enough to do the job. All right, Caleb, uh, you kind of laughed and threw out that honestly about the tournament question. A lot of what ESPN was talking about during the course of the game was some bracketology, but they also threw in that, and there's nothing locked down, but that the team that won tonight more than likely would escape that first night at the Big 12 tournament which happened to be the last game you guys played last year, the first night of the Big 12 tournament. How important is it as you go through this gauntlet, because you still got potentially four games, to try to get out of that first night and get yourself into the Thursday and have a, a more decent shot to work your way through the bracket? Uh, it, it's very important. That, that's less stress on our bodies, less stress. Like, that we have to, you know, less games we have to, we have to win, honestly. But – that we we take it every game day by day of uh, every every practice day by day every game one by one honestly the big what, whatever they have us said if we got to play four games if we got to play three it, it it doesn't matter we're going to be ready to play and we're going to go out there and play hard and as, and fight as long as we got to thanks guys our next question comes from Barry Trammell from the Oklahoma go ahead Barry yeah um Avery uh Caleb played really well offensively in the first half, and Caleb, everybody else, you know, was sort of off. Caleb gets in foul trouble early in the second half, and that's when you guys go on your run. 
just like in Lubbock, where you where you won without him after he fouled out. How much does it help the progression of this team to know that even if Cade's in foul trouble, has to sit a big chunk of the game, you guys can step up and, and produce and and come out uh, the winner like tonight. It's the depth depth of the team that we have. So one guy's off, we have a person in that position that could go out and get the job done. Like, for example, his brother, Keelan Boone, he had came in, made a big time three for us to get us going. And that's because we have depth in our team and preparation. That's it. Caleb, how about, what, what do you say about that, about your ability to, to play without um, Cade? I mean, we're, we're, we're a team that's so versatile. We got, we got guys that can, we got so many guys that can go for double double figures. We got guys that can step up on defensive end. Really, it's honestly, it's the next man up at that point, and it's, that's why we're such great at, as a team. Do you hope he'll quit fouling? One last one. Do you hope he'll quit fouling so much, though? This is three or four games where he's gotten severe foul trouble. Yeah, it's just it's just his aggression. And we, we love that about him, but it comes with time. And he, he's a good player. He, he'll know how to pick and choose his spots. Our next question comes from Chris Becker from the Ocali. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, guys. Uh, Avery, how much momentum does this give you guys going into Bedlam? A whole lot of energy, <laughs> a whole lot. I can't even explain. Like in the locker room, when Coach Mike walked in, it, it was propels everywhere. It, it, it brings a lot of energy to the team. And now that it's bedlam, we, it's about to be even more energy. And the, this game about to be even more important to us. And so we just got to preparation. <laughs> it start starting practice, man. We're just going to take it day by day like Caleb says. And Caleb, you're you're from Oklahoma. How much does Bedlam mean to you? Oh, man, this, 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 these two games are being a lot, honestly. Being from also an uh, hour and a half, two hours away from there, hours away from here, man. It, it means a lot because, you know, growing up, you love, when you're down here, you love OU football. So then your dream is to always go there. For, for some reason, but then you, you go to Stillwater and then like, you just be like, bro, I, I just like, you just you flip that switch. And that, that game means a lot more to me than anything. And I know Coach Sun, I'll play it. And I love this because this game to me, I play this game for Coach Sun because I know how much, how much he loves his rivalry. Awesome, thank you guys. And our final question is gonna come from Ryan Breeden from the Ocali, go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, Avery, how important was the student section and the crowd tonight? They're very big. I mean, we the, a lot of the energy comes from them. It can't just come from the team because sometimes when teams go on runs, we, we slowly lose our energy. But whenever we get a big bucket, the crowd gets us back in the game. And we, we wouldn't be anything without the fans. Would you say that they were kind of the energy booster tonight? Or what would you point to as that? What was that like? pivotal moment, the time when the momentum started to switch? Of course, I would say he only hit that three. The crowd went wild and that just brought energy to the team. Um, Caleb, would you say this is this is one of the louder crowds that you've heard and been a part of, even though it wasn't full and it really can't be full, but would you say that this one was one of the louder ones? Man, this, this, this arena, those fans were all the greatest fans, in, honestly, in the world, no matter what scenario what what era we're in they're the, they're the greatest fans in the world I, I love playing in front of them they they give me i can't even explain to you how much energy they give me i, I really can't but I, I love them and i know coach mike loves them i know my guy Avery over here loves them and i just i can't thank i can't thank them enough honestly appreciate it all right fellas so the team has won its last three it's won four of the last five Avery, what do you want people to know about the Cowboys? What makes the Cowboys dangerous? Um, we willing to go up against anybody that comes in front of us, and we ain't going to back down from nobody. And Caleb, do you feel like since you've been here, is this about as well as the team has performed? Are you firing on all cylinders? Do you feel like you're peaking? No, I still don't think we're peaking, honestly. Like I said last time, man, we still got people that's going up and down 
when when people are all going the same way, man, this is the when this team will be really dangerous. So the best is yet to come. Oh man, the best is yet to come. It's only it's only February, man. The best don't happen until March, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate both you guys as always. Congratulations on the win. Have a great night. Hey, tell hey, I want this to go by OSU fans, OSU community. We love y'all, man. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank y'all so much, man. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, congratulations on the win, first and foremost. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Texas Tech, I know you have so much respect for how much of a grind it is to play those guys and how tough and physical it is every time. But here you are with a season sweep now over them. How, how'd you do it? Uh, kids fought. Um, we got some tough dudes on our team, some some real serious competitors. And, and that was a competitive win. It wasn't pretty. Um, it probably wasn't as ugly as the Texas game in some respects, um, but you had to fight for everything. And, and that's what you get when you play Chris Beard team. So hats off to him and his staff. They make you earn everything you get. Uh, and here we are with two overtime wins against them. And obviously at any point that could swing the other way. So I'm proud of our kids for not, you know, hanging their heads, uh, tucking their tails and running from the adversity we faced there early in the second half, but bowing in next and going out there, keep swinging. And, uh, I'm thankful for the win because everyone in this league is um, is an extremely valuable one. They both referenced one of your terms, competitive stamina. Um, so in overtime today, Texas Tech was two for 10 from the field. If you go back to that Texas game, Texas in overtime was over 12 from the field. So that means your last two opponents in overtime, both of whom were ranked in the top 15 in the country, are combined two for 22. Um, what does competitive stamina mean to you and how does it apply in these type of situations? What does it actually look like? It's actually a pretty simple term. I just give it a fancy name. So it sounds good, but it's really just about playing harder for longer. And every guy in our, on our team gets to a point where they think they don't have any more to give. And what I tell them is find it, go find it, go find some more to give to your team. That's what competitive stamina is. Right when you think that you think you might break, dig down a little bit deeper and think about the guy next to you and what he needs from you at that moment. And, you know, Isaac Likely, who I didn't know what to expect from, he leads us in competitive stamina. And he is no question the heart and soul of our team. But we got some other guys coming along now. Avery Anderson starting to get into that category up there. Bryce Williams and Rondell Walker. Uh, but there's no question that the guy who sparked us tonight was a guy who hadn't played much the last couple of weeks in Keelan Boone. Uh, his minutes were tremendous from an energy standpoint. You know, look at the stat sheet and try to figure out why. If you didn't watch the game, you don't know why I would say that. But if you were in that game, you know that when he came in, the tie turn. Very good. Members of the media, if you have a question for Oklahoma State head coach Mike Boynton, please click raise hand and we'll try and get to everybody. Our first question is going to come from Frank Bonner from the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Frank. Yeah, Mike, I was going to ask you about Keelan. He hadn't scored for you guys since the Baylor game, and he scores arguably the the most important five points of the game, you know, for a player who hadn't scored much, what does that say just by his mental grit to be able to come in and do what he was able to do for you guys today? Um, you know, first, obviously give the kid a lot of credit because it, it can become discouraging this time of year when you haven't been involved game wise, but to his credit, he's probably had his five best practices of his career leading into this game since we played, um, since we played last. And you know, I always talk about talk to those guys about the work wins. And it's hard to believe that when you don't see that opportunity in front of you. Well, tonight he was needed and his number was called and he was ready. But the only way he was ready is because he prepared the right way and he was in the right mental space. So I'm extremely proud of him, but I'm also proud of his teammates because no one castigated him. No one pushed him aside. No one told him to you know, go away. They just continued to encourage him. And, um, you know, for a couple of days in practice this week, he was one of our best players. And, you know, he just had to wait his turn. And when the opportunity came, he was ready to go. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud of him for doing it. And how big was, was Avery for you guys? Not not just down the stretch, but during that 15-0 run that got you guys back in it. Yeah, I mean, Avery, in a lot of ways, was the most important player on the court because he had to do it on both ends for a pretty long period of time. Uh, we, we stuck him on McClung. He guarded him. He made it hard for him to catch it. 
you know, late in regulation, he was the reason McClung didn't get a great shot off. And uh, he obviously was also making a lot of plays, getting to the rim and scoring for us. Um, he's just becoming a really, really good player. Uh, he's, sat, he's rounding his game into some more constructive form. He's playing much more under control. Uh, he's playing with a lot of confidence, and, and I'm happy to see it. And then when Kay goes out and Texas Tech is in the midst of their run, what did you see from your players in that moment? Well, we just talked about, like, can we hold it down defensively enough? Can, can our defense help us get some easy baskets? Because going up into that, we hadn't scored for a while. And now he comes out and he's really looking around like, where are the guys going to get points from? Well, we had to do it with our defense. Our defense sparked us. We got some easy baskets in transition. Obviously, we talked about Keelan's three kind of breaking the ice. And um, our guys just never let our offense or lack of offense stop us from competing on the defensive end. And we did that for 45 minutes today. Our next question comes from Jacob Unruh from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Jacob. Jacob, we'll come right back to you. Uh, our next question will come from Marshall Scott from Pistols Firing. Go ahead, Marshall. I think the guys in the arena are having some issues. Yeah, everyone's falling off here. So I'll tell you what, I know Barry is from home, so let's try with Barry Trammell. Barry, you there? He's on mute. Barry's on mute. Barry, Barry, can you hear us? Okay, now I'm off. Okay. There you go. Right. Hey, yeah, Mike, uh, it's a great win to, to be down like you were, and Cade gets four fouls and come back and take uh, and, and catch him without him and then win down the stretch. But at some point, what can you do to, to keep him out of foul trouble? Because that's not – ideal I don't think oh definitely not ideal um no I mean it's hard so his 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 fourth foul was probably the one that he actually earned the most he actually pushed the guy off in the post he's got to know at that point he can't make that play um the other one on the drive eh, it could go either way uh the thing about it is in game Barry you just got to adjust you know we went zone there when we brought him back in with four and that kind of protected him a little bit he played a lot of the game with four fouls, um, but we just had to get him off the court because it was so early in the half that we couldn't have him foul out with 15 minutes to go. Is you beat Tech twice with him in foul trouble? He fouled out. I forgot how much time in overtime in Lubbock, and you you went ahead and won. Is that really encouraging to know that if you have to play without him, not only can you survive, but you can be really competitive and 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 take care of good teams. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we won a game on the road without him playing at all <laughs> this year. Um, and so, you know, I, I like to think that we have a really good team. And I know Kay gets all the, the, the hype and he deserves it because he's a great, great player. Uh, but we got some other guys who I think are just kind of flying under the radar that are having some really good years. You know, Avery Anderson being at the top of that list on the Walker's contributions. I'm not sure anybody outside of this building expected him to contribute much for us at all. He didn't have his best game today, but he's been a really solid contributor for us. Caleb Boone's evolution is really the thing that's kind of separated us here the last couple of weeks because he's been rock solid on both ends of the court. Caleb's energy too today in overtime on the glass. You know, you talk about competitive stamina, you know, being a rebounder, that's being a tough guy. And for him, it seemed like he got every rebound in overtime. Yeah, he, he went and got him with two hands. He was setting good screens and getting to the rim. And uh, in the second half, he stepped up there and made some big free throws for us. Very good. Our next question is going to come from Dean Rule from the Ocali. Go ahead, Dean. Hey, Coach. You kind of talked about it already a little bit, uh, just with Caleb's evolution right there. But can you just maybe talk a little bit about what he's going to mean come Big 12 tournament time and even NCAA tournament time? Uh, it's a long ways away. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of daylight between now and then, but you know we we just need as many guys that are with us to be playing at this time. Of year. We've always prided ourselves in getting better over the course of the season, and his progress is evidence that we keep preaching that message. And it doesn't matter how we did today. Tomorrow we want to be better. Next week we want to be better than we are this week. This week we want to be better than we were last week. And if we can continue that both individually and collectively. Once the time comes for tournaments, 
then I feel like we'll have a chance to make a run. Thank you, Mike. Our next question comes from Dylan Buckingham from KFOR. Go ahead, Dylan. Hey, Mike, it's actually Nate Fake and Logs under, under Dylan's name. Uh, your reaction after the game. Good teammate. Yeah, your reaction after the game at half court is blowing up already on social media and that kind of thing. What did this mean to you? And what, what was you, what were you feeling in that moment? Well, well, what this means to me is there's so much going into us doing this right now. And these kids have played incredibly hard amidst a lot of adversity. Um, I don't want to share too much personal information, but you know, this pandemic is still going on. It's affecting a lot of the kids on our team, not personally, but some people that they know. And so to watch them go out and compete the way they did amidst it all, and to see that our fans respond, and again, I said this before, I'm not sure that anybody has maximized the capacity that they have the way we have this year. And a lot of that credit goes to our students. Uh, they've been incredibly energetic and engaged with us all year. And I'm just happy that they feel like these kids are playing hard and representing them. And so I'm happy to see the success. The win means a lot, but the engagement from a community-wide standpoint between the students, our local fans, the people who drive in from Oklahoma City or Tulsa, uh, is just encouraging to where we can really take this program long term. Our next question comes from Frank Bonner from the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Frank. Uh, we're, all, we're on one computer here, so this, this question is from Jacob. Okay. That's, what we call, that's what we call being good teammates right there. That's, that's making it work. Teamwork. Um, Mike, and, and the defense tonight, you know, you, you guys played really well down the stretch. Um, what did you think of the defense? I, I thought it was uh, one of our best defensive performances. Uh, we obviously knew McClung's a low to handle because he's so quick and he can get off a shot and he can make hard shots. The thing about McClung is you can't get discouraged when he makes a shot that's really, really difficult because he does that to everybody. And because if you get discouraged, then you give him an easy one and now he gets rolling. We never let him really get comfortable. Everything he got tonight was challenged, but I thought we did a good job rebounding the ball. And I thought we did a good job just containing those guys off the dribble as much as possible. They did a really good job of trying to jump stop and get you in the air. And I thought for the most part, we stayed on the ground and didn't go with too many shot fakes. So I thought we played with a lot of discipline on the defensive end today. And, and I apologize if, if someone's asked you about this, but um, you, your celebration afterwards with the fans, uh, what was that like? Um, that This is who this is about. And it really was mostly, and I, this is no disrespect to our older fans because I love them too, but our students mean so much to the culture and the energy in our program. These kids are their classmates, the guys that play on the team. And to see them show up and support them the way they have. And, I, and again, I said this before, even when we were on break, I mean, I remember our game versus West Virginia, our students were incredible. And, um, you know, it, it's just, I'm just so thankful that they've been so engaged with this group and that they feel like they're a part of it. And I hope that they feel like um, that this is something, a special time to be at Oklahoma State, to be a student here. And I hope our fans feel like this is a special time to support the basketball program here because I think somebody on the TV said that like 70 of our 74 points were scored by freshmen and sophomores. I think that's right. Like, I know Kay's leaving, right? But there's a lot of other guys out there that aren't leaving. And there's a lot to be proud of and look forward to for this program for years now. And can you talk about the shirt you wore, you wore tonight and what that means to you? Yeah, so there's a there's a the head coach at uh, Cal State Fullerton. His name is Diedrich Taylor. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, we've developed a friendship, and he he's the one who came up with the idea. Uh, as black coaches, we've gotten together several times throughout the pandemic, and um, wanted to do something to honor uh, the guys that are in the game now with an ode on the front of the shirt to Coach Thompson and what he believed in. Uh, so it has the name of every current black head coach in the country. Uh, because so much of this, and I'm doing it myself, we talk about what's happened in the past. But there's some guys making black history right now um, that are having great impacts in different universities all over the country. And so an opportunity to give those guys some acknowledgement uh, was a great opportunity for me because I feel very responsible for being a part of helping them have success. Uh, I need, when we don't play them, for Shaka Smart to win. I need Quanzo Martin to have success. I need Mike Anderson at St. John's to win and, and 
and continue to create opportunities for other guys who may be not being given those opportunities, kind of like you highlighted in your article, uh, Jacob. Um, and so tonight was just an opportunity to, to thank uh, Diedrich for making the shirt and to, and to maybe maybe bring some awareness to some guys that are out there doing a really good job. The two of them that I know of for sure, Isaac Brown at Wichita State, who's in first place in the American in an interim uh, situation, and Terrence Johnson, who's at Texas State. Both guys took over incredibly difficult situations. I know how hard it is to take a job over in the spring, kind of when you know you got it and got time to prepare. But I can't imagine what those guys did. I mean, Isaac Brown basically became the head coach in October and was like, hey, good luck. Just don't don't burn the building down while you're here, all right? <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Mike. Anybody else in, the, in that pod right there have any questions or was it just you two? Well, I got a follow up to the fan question. Um, with the nature of, of, of what's happening, only 25% of capacity and so on, how important, more important is that engagement at the end of games in a situation like this? I don't know. You probably have to ask the students. Uh, I feel I feel so connected to these kids. Uh, I feel truly like a part of the fabric of this university uh, because they supported me personally. They have. They've really supported me. Uh, these kids, they see me on campus. They come up to me. They reach out to me on Twitter. I uh, try to be engaged with them. I wish I was more visible on campus this year, but everybody I would understand, I hope, why I'm not. Uh, and so I just want to tell them, even though I can't see them around, that when they come to this building, that this is a place that they know that they're appreciated. Yeah. I think we're right, good over next here. Questions. All right. Next question is going to come from Chris Becker from the Oak Poly. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, Coach. Uh, Avery talked about how important this momentum is carrying into Bedlam. You know, can you kind of speak on that a little bit and, uh, you know, just how big this Bedlam game is going to be? Yeah. Uh, momentum is not a word that I love. Uh, I get the sentiment, but you know, I believe your, your momentum is only as good as your preparation. And so what we've got to do is understand that Saturday's game is going to be much different than today. Uh, they're probably the second hottest team in the country, considering Baylor hasn't lost at all. They played really, really well over the last, you know, really five or six weeks. And it's going to be a battle. And so we've got to be our best in order to have, give ourselves a chance. Uh, we got a lot of respect for them, uh, but we don't like them. And so we're going to go down there ready to compete at a high level. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. Our next question is going to come from Cliff Brunt from the Associated Press. Go ahead, Cliff. Uh, Coach, uh, sorry if you've ans answered this already, but um, how significant was the run that you guys made in the second half when Cade went to the bench with four fouls? And just how, what does that say to you about your team that you were able to climb back in the game without him? I think it's kind of a subtle thing. And obviously it doesn't happen often because he plays a lot of minutes for us. But we've had several games where we've played well with him out. Um, he fouled out totally in the game in Lubbock in overtime. And we found a way to win. I think he found out maybe like the second possession of overtime. We played the most critical part of that game without him. Uh, he's been in foul trouble some other games. We actually won a game without him playing at all. And we played Baylor good for 25 minutes without him dressing the best team in the country. So I think what it says is we have a, a, a really good team. Uh, you know, maybe those other guys aren't high in terms of their ceiling, right? You, you don't think you'll see them next year in the NBA uniform, but there's some really gritty, really good college basketball players on our roster right now. All right, our final question is going to come from Marshall Scott from Pistols Firing. Go ahead, Marshall. Uh, yeah, Mike, you kind of talked about Keelan earlier. Why, I don't know how to ask this, like, without being it bluntly, why even put him in the game? You know, he hasn't played much. You guys really needed, you know, kind of a spark there. Why put him in the game? Well, there are things that, well, first of all, it goes back to practice. If, if he hadn't practiced well, I don't feel the confidence, right? So it still goes back to this is the kind of the, this is what I think people from the outside have a hard time understanding, right? Because they only watch the game and every judgment is based on what happens in the game. I got to do this every day with these guys. And the decisions I make on game day, sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong, but they're pretty thorough, right? And so he's practiced well. And obviously, at some early in the year, he started like the first eight games. He got ability just through a stretch. He didn't play well. And then he didn't practice well. And he kind of got down on himself. 
And he found himself at the back end of the rotation with guys that were just playing better in front of him. So his good practices opened the door so that when those guys weren't playing well, particularly about the second half, you know, give him a shot. And practice can carry on the game. His energy was great. Um, and, and he really, really sparked us. And then we kind of talked about you guys taking over in overtimes. Your inexperience has shown at times this year with the turnovers, maybe missed free throws. What is it about overtimes that maybe that inexperience doesn't show there? I think there's just a heightened sense of awareness. Um, you know, it's, not, it's, it's, it's interesting because guys usually do have a great awareness at the end of games. And so overtime is just an extension of that, right? So even if you're down eight with four minutes to go, guys play really hard and, and try to execute and they're really aggressive. But overtime, you kind of have that same momentum, except the game starts to happen. And we do this every day in practice. I, you guys haven't been able to come to practice as much, but we do these four-minute games every single day. And we create situations that they have to figure out how to win. We're down five with three minutes and 30 seconds to go. Cade's fouled out. We practice this stuff. I think because they practiced it, they feel prepared for those situations when it, when it happens in a game. And then I see he rebounded well, but he only shot one. I think he had one field goal attempt. Kind of what did you think of his return? I thought it was good. You know, I'm interested to see how he feels tomorrow after two weeks basically off, it's two weeks to the day that he played last. Um, but his presence, his mere presence on the court is so valuable to us because he can cover up things that, that you know, other guys just aren't aware of and, and make plays. Um, well, we ran a play there late in the game where we were trying to get the ball back to Caden. They did a pretty good job of denying him. And I think it resulted in Caleb getting fouled and shooting the layup. Um, but it, because I saw it, like, no one else could see that right now because they haven't been through it enough yet. So his presence on the court, although it doesn't always show up on the stat sheet, invaluable. You guys didn't shoot well from three, but you only shot 12 of them. You guys have shot more in the past. Did, did you like how you guys were able to find offense outside of the three-point shot when they were falling? Yeah, I mean, I got to figure out who's teaching my guys to fall down while they're shooting threes. Because that's not a good strategy. It's hard to make it laying down. So we'll get we'll get that addressed in practice. But I'm glad we didn't take a ton of them today because we certainly didn't have it from outside. Appreciate it, Mike. Well, I know I said that would be the last question, but we got a late one in from Barry Trammell. Go ahead, Barry. No problem. He's on mute still. There we go. Hey, one last question. I was going to ask you about a, a strange lineup you used for a couple of minutes, Mike. It's the biggest lineup I assume you've ever played. You had both bigs in, and your three perimeter guys were Keelan, Cade, and Likely. Yeah. Um, what did you? What made you think, hey, let's let's play just as big as we possibly can for two minutes? Well, that goes to kind of your question earlier. I was trying to we could play zone with that lineup and cover a lot of ground, right? And we don't have to move around as much because those guys got great length. So you get Caleb, uh, Keelan, excuse me, and Ice at the top of your zone. And they're both, you know, Ice, I think, has the biggest wingspan. Um, and then you got a pretty long back line with M.A. and Cade on the wings in the back and Caleb in the middle. And it just kind of it gives us a, a, a chance to kind of settle the drive, protect the fouling, and still be able to contest the push up, which I think is a pretty good job. Did you like how they played together for that uh, little stretch? I don't know right now. <laughs> Got to have to go back and watch the film. Um, obviously, that's not an ideal lineup offensively. There's not a whole lot of space on the floor. But, you know, defensive stops were so critical tonight. And we just had to kind of grind it out on the offensive end and just make enough plays down the stretch. Thanks, Mike. All right, Coach, so I'll do it for questions, but while we've got the group here, is there anything else that you want to say, anything that's important to you maybe that we missed? Um, I, I think we did a good job covering it all. Um, congrats to Josh Holiday and Kenny Gajewski for getting off the season for a good start. And look forward to seeing everybody out at Obrey Stadium for the opening on Wednesday. All right, congratulations, Coach, on the win. We appreciate you always. Members of the media, thank you as well, and thanks for your resilience when the Wi-Fi went down. <laughs>